This is part four in my advanced optimization series using the 2014-2015 Science Olympiad Division B rules. I will show more of the optimizations I tried in an attempt to get even better results than what I showed in the previous video. If you recall where I left off last time, I had just achieved an efficiency of 4533 with build number 14. That would turn out to be my best overall result, but there is some benefit in seeing the process and showing what I attempted in subsequent builds. For build number 15, I tried to duplicate build 14, but this time using 132nd by 132nd tension members. This change alone was enough to reduce the mass by 0.23 grams, and you can see from the final mass numbers, this was almost exactly what the weight difference was between the two bridges. Unfortunately, as you can see from the high-speed footage, the failure was clearly at the tension member as it detached from the leg. For the next build, I went back to 1 16th by 1 32nd tension members, but to try and hit the mass target of 3 grams, I reduced the leg mass by about 0.35 grams compared to build number 14. In case you were wondering how long these builds take, I recorded that this build took me 80 minutes, which would have been the time after I made the material selection. This time you can see that the failure happens at the right front lower leg. It may look like a tension failure, but if you go frame by frame, the leg breaks first, which then causes the tension member to split apart. I was now faced with the situation that simply reducing the tension mass or the leg mass wasn't enough to get a great bridge at 3 grams. For the next attempt, I decided to try a tapered leg. Because I saw the lower leg break in build number 16, I wanted to have a leg that was wider at the bottom than at the top. I decided to go with a 9 to 6 millimeter transition. This would allow me to use slightly higher density wood, but the overall leg mass would be in the range that I needed. One way to make legs that have a continual taper would have been to use a nice laser cutter, but that is something I don't currently have access to. I do have a 3D printer though, so my solution was to make a jig that held all four legs and was the correct dimensions so I could easily sand down the legs to what I needed. I used a combination of the rotary tool sander and the foam sanding block to get pretty good results. The first attempt at using tapered legs didn't yield great results as you can see from the high speed footage. The left front tension member detached even though it was 1 16th by 1 32nd. This failure mode was a bit discouraging and seemed to be a bit random as the joint that failed was extremely well glued as you can see from the debris. Build number 18 turned out to be my second best overall result with an efficiency of over 4400. This bridge would have also placed second at nationals that year. I tried slightly more dense legs to see if I could get the tension members to not detach and to make up for that extra weight I did two things. First I tried sanding the tension members so the connection to the legs were still 1 16th of an inch thick, but the main part of the tension was closer to 1 32nd of an inch thick. Again, I used a 3D print to help sand down the center part of the tension members. Later I would come up with a better solution, but for now on this bridge it worked well. I also decided to bake this bridge to reduce the mass as much as possible before testing. You can see three weights in my notes, complete, dry, and baked. The complete weight was the mass right after I finished building it. The relative humidity at the time was 29%. The dry weight was the weight after spending about a day in my dry box that contained silica gel packs which gets the relative humidity down to about 18%. Next is the baked weight which is the result of putting the bridge in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. As you can see, this gets roughly an additional 3% weight reduction from even the dry box. That is very nice, but it doesn't come without risks or hassle if you want to use this for an actual competition. I will probably create a whole separate video on this process to show the pros and cons of this technique. The high speed footage shows a nice leg failure and the results were very good with a 2.92 gram bridge holding 12.8 kilograms. For the next build, I used slightly heavier legs to see if that would be enough to help with the last failure. I knew that this bridge wasn't light enough to beat the 4900 score, but it had the potential to be over 4700 if it performed well. Unfortunately, my tension sanding technique proved to be a problem here, and you can see that for the first time, the tension member actually broke mid-span. I probably sanded this a bit too much or unevenly and created a weak spot. I came up with a better solution for the next build. For build number 20, I tried another design tweak. I called it my no top design, meaning I had the legs come completely together at the top. 
I also changed the design to get the benefit of the wider tension attachment without having to do any sanding. Here is what the top looks like. You can see I'm still using a very small and light side support to not rely on just the butt joint between the legs. And here is my solution to the tension attachment. I just used another small piece of 1 32nd by 1 32nd bass and glued it next to the primary tension piece, taking care to glue not only to the leg, but to the tension piece itself. This bridge didn't perform well at all. It had a nice leg failure mode, but to be honest, it wasn't built well from being as square and as level as the others, mainly because I didn't take the time to make a new 3D jig that would have made this much better. Ideally, to explore this design properly, the angle of the bridge legs would be a bit more shallow and not just be made taller like I did here. At this point in the project, I didn't want to make any more design changes like that. I made one more serious attempt at scoring close to 5,000 with build number 21. This was essentially a clone of my 4533 bridge, but to get the mass down to the required 3 grams, I used my new tension member technique and dropped the cross member pieces down to 1 32nd by 1 20 balsa to save about 0.1 grams. This bridge performed well at just over a 4,000 efficiency, but the failure at the top left leg area points to the cross members not being strong enough. Further optimizations from here might involve using the lighter cross members only in the bottom half of the bridge. I built one final bridge for this project, and it was really more just out of curiosity than to try and break any records. I wanted to see how a bridge of this design worked using all basswood, including the legs. I wanted to use 3 8 by 1 16 for the legs, but all I had on hand was 3 8 by 1 32nd, so I wound up gluing the pieces together to make a 1 16 inch wide leg. That is definitely not as good as using a single piece and probably added a fair amount of glue weight. Here's what an all bass version of that bridge looks like. It is very thin, but it was surprisingly strong. It held nearly 10 kilograms for an efficiency of over 2400. Nothing exceptional, but maybe enough to think about for future devices giving it more attention. Stay tuned for the next part of this series where I try to draw some conclusions and summarize the key points of what I learned during this project. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you like this kind of content.